Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to get into Mythic Raiding. And with the Race to World First being as popular as it is, I really hope that a number of you are considering getting into Mythic Raiding if you haven't done it in the past, or maybe considering pushing some higher end Mythic Guild or Mythic content. So this video will be kind of a guideline from my experience, of what's the easiest way to transition from being a very casual like normal and heroic raider to kind of dip your dip your toes in into mythic raiding um, and see how you like it and then for those of you who are already mythic raiding i will also give a few tips on how you can kind of climb the ladder if you're trying to push some higher ranks so first of all uh, to address a few misconceptions about just general mythic raiding. Mythic raiders don't necessarily commit all, all their time, like every hour of every waking moment to playing WoW, okay? There is a vast spectrum of mythic raiders going all the way from people who log on and play, you know, six, eight hours a week, all the way up to people who play all day and every day. And especially if you're just trying to get into Mythic, see how you like it, maybe experiment with it a little bit, then it doesn't really take that much of a time commitment. Um, especially if you're someone who is, for example, pugging heroics, you will actually find that joining a Mythic guild who raids maybe two days a week will most likely be um, much less time invested overall because you don't have to spend all that time looking for a group, then joining bad pugs where, you know, you just can't kill the boss and then having to relook for groups um, or anything like that. So you kind of have a set schedule, schedule where you just show up, you raid, and then you, you move on with whatever you want to do. So that's the first thing. Raiding doesn't necessarily mean that you need to commit a lot of time to it. It's more of committing time at set points in the week or in the day. So with this first point, um, what should be the hours that you should be looking at if you're trying to join a Mythic Guild? In my experience, most intro Mythic Guilds and even up to about top 100 uh, will be raiding between 8 to 12 hours a week. So that's usually either um, having like three raid nights with less hours or two raid nights with four hours each. Um, and that's kind of a good point to start at. And it's probably the best for most people since it's not a ton of time that you have to commit, especially if you're doing three days, uh, you know, you still have a lot of free time outside of that. Um, but even on for two day guilds who rate four hours a night and they just rate two days, most people can typically put, put aside that amount of time. Now for these guilds, uh, you should only be required to have one character. There is no reason why a guild would ever require an alt from you until you hit uh, probably about the top 20. Um, and it's top 20 in, in your region, so either US or EU. Outside of that, you are pretty much always going to be fine just having one character that you play. Um, as far as loot systems go nowadays, it doesn't really matter since personal loot kind of forces a guild's hand, but you can either have a personal loot system where people just get the loot and they keep whatever they loot from the boss, or you can also have loot council systems where the loot that can be traded will end up going into kind of a master looter type pool and then decided by the officers who it goes to. Um, I would advise uh, a little bit of caution with loot council systems in lower end guilds, uh, so introductory mythic guilds, just because typically the officers in these guilds are less experienced. Of course, there's plenty, plenty of ex exceptions to this, and I'm sure there are plenty of really good uh, loot councils out there in lower end mythic guilds, but typically you will see a personal loot system where you just kind of loot whatever and if it's an upgrade for you you keep it if not then then you can put it up to trade um so next what progression should you be looking at if you're looking at joining a guild at the the time of, re of me recording this video so we are about four weeks into eternal palace mythic 
By this point, if you're looking at joining a mythic guild, they should have at least the first three bosses dead. Any casual mythic guild will have killed the first three bosses by this point. And if they haven't, then I I really don't don't suggest uh, looking at those guilds too much because they there might be some other issues outside of just player skill that, that might be going on in those guilds. But the first three bosses are typically fairly easy. And even if you're a heroic raider, if you've killed heroic Ashara, you can do the first three bosses on mythic, essentially. So now that you kind of know what you what you want to be looking at, so a guild that's at least three out of eight uh, mythic, um, they raid the amount of hours they can commit to it. They only require one character. They have personal loot um, or loot council. So now you kind of have to start building up your character's resume, so to speak. And whenever you're looking at getting recruited into a mythic guild, first thing that they will all look at is logs. So I, I talk about logs uh, plenty of times on my stream, in my videos. Um, and if you, don't, if you don't know what they are, then you can look into that further. But essentially, you just upload them to warcraftlogs.com and it's a recording of a fight that you did. Now, within these logs, most recruitment officers from Mythic Guilds, uh, especially at the introductory level, will just look at your parses. And that's basically comparing yourself to others on how well you do on specific fights. So if your character doesn't have any logs, then that's the very first thing you need to do. You need to look up how to upload logs, um, which I also have a video on if you want to check it out, and start uploading some logs of your character. And this will kind of start building a, um, a history of your rating, how well you do on fights, and you can also reflect on it on how to improve. So you do this either in pugs or if you're in a heroic guild, you will typically also be uploading logs. But once you have a few logs uploaded, you can start looking at your numbers. And I can tell you this from experience, whenever you're trying to get recruited in to an introductory mythic guild, most of them will give you a chance even if you have lower parses. Now, by lower parses, I mean like green, blue. Um, even with green parses, you can get into some mythic guilds. Not very good ones, but you can get into some mythic guilds. So I would suggest aiming for the blue-purple range. Um, and obviously, if you can get the gold parses, um, or the orange parses, I mean, that's a huge benefit, huge plus, and you can basically choose any intro mythic guild that you want at that point. So while doing heroic, um, build up your parses a little bit, and that, that is basically the first stepping stone and the biggest key that you need to join a mythic guild. If you have, let's say, blue on all the fights, it's not great, but you will most likely be accepted into a mythic guild that you're applying for. If you have purple or orange, like I said, they will basically take you um, unless they already have a lot of the characters that you play on roster. So the next thing is maining a character. I always suggest this to people um, whenever I talk to them about getting into a guild. Make sure that you are comfortable and you know at least decent playing a single character. Uh, being good, decent to good on one character is much better than you having like five characters um, and just being very mediocre in all of them. And this is mostly because of the way the, the BFA gearing system works with essences and everything. It is very unlikely that you will ever just randomly main switch mid raid. So now that your character has a little bit of history with logs that either you uploaded or your guild that you raid rogue with has uploaded, um, you can start actually looking at guilds that you might want to consider joining. So I typically recommend looking for guilds, obviously of your faction and on your server primarily. And this is if you're just trying to, tr to consider mythic raiding um, and see how you like it for maybe a few weeks. So depending on the server that you play on, there might or might not be mythic guilds uh, that, that are recruiting or that are even in the correct kind of framework of, you know, the correct days that you can commit to, 
correct number of hours, uh, you know, not too hardcore, not too casual. But if there are, then obviously that is where you apply first. If not, I suggest using a website like Wild Progress, where you can basically look up any server um, and you can kind of look down the, the guilds that are on the specific server. So for example, if I look at Hydral, which is the rank or the, the server that I raided on previously, I can see that there's quite a few Mythic Guilds. There are 19 Mythic Guilds on this server. So if I was just considering getting into Mythic Raiding, I would primarily look at guilds that are 3 out of 8 or above. If you are really confident um, in your ability and you know you, the way you play your character, then you can look at a little higher progress. But if you're just trying to dip your toes into Mythic Raiding, then 3 out of 8 is, is that kind of sweet spot. Because as you can see, there's a lot of 3 out of 8 guilds, even just on this one server. So we can go here from rank 8 all the way down to rank 14. These are all 3 out of 8 mythic guilds. Now as you can see this is a horde dominant server. Um, so if you're going to be playing on the server you essentially have to be horde. Okay so now we can go even more in depth and check when these guilds raid to make sure they can commit the time and if they're recruiting the class that you need. And there's a few ways of doing this, but I'll just uh, check Grey Parses here, for example. And typically they will have a description. Most of the Mythic Guilds do have this updated. So right here it says that they raid from 8 to 11 Pacific Standard Time uh, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So they raid 3 hours a night, 2 days a week, uh, so 6 hours a week total. So that is typically a good sign. Whenever you have a, an intro mythic guild that rates 6 hours and they're already at this level, that means they're fairly decent to, as a guild to get started in. So now what you would like to check is if they need the class that you play. So for example, if I play a rogue, I can check their Blackwater Behemoth kill. Let's check their most recent kill. And let's check what classes they have on it. So as you can see, they have double brewmaster. Um, but as a DPS, I want to be looking at what melee DPS they have. They have two demon hunters. They have two assassination rogues. And one fury warrior. So this guild might not want to be recruiting another rogue since they already have two of them. But for example, if you're playing a DK or an enhancement shaman, a red paladin... Uh, typically, they will want to be recruiting those classes. And more often than not, intro mythic guilds or, uh, you know, mythic guilds that are 3 out of 8 at this point will either have a very small roster of about 20, 21, 22 people at most. Um, so if you're a person who can commit to their raid times and are able to make it to raid every time, you will essentially just guarantee yourself a spot. So let's continue with the analogy of if I was a rogue. Um, and we can move on to Hive here. And let's check their kill. So Blackwater Behemoth or Radiance. Uh, we can look at either. Okay, this guild only has one rogue. So right here you can already tell that maybe they would like another rogue. Because rogues are extremely good on some of the later bosses. So if I'm this guild, I'm probably looking at recruiting a rogue if I am recruiting more melee DPS. And you kind of do this thing um, for whatever you play, whether it be healer, tank. Um, as tank, it's a little bit different to get recruited because typically guilds will have uh, tank spots kind of locked in and they will only recruit tanks between tiers unless they end up uh, kicking a tank mid tier. So the next step is the application itself. And typically there are two main ways that this happens. The first is either through a guild website uh, where they have like a questionnaire that you have to fill out. If that is the case, I suggest putting some time and effort into it. It doesn't need to be crazy, but you know, just spend 10 to 15 minutes at least uh, thinking about your answers, kind of fill it out. And especially for questions that have kind of open-ended answers, Type more than a single word. And also, 
capitalized letters, don't make spelling mistakes um, for the most part. That says a lot about the person who's applying. If you put any thought or effort into it, your application will stand out ab above uh, most others. If you only answer with one word um, answers and you, know, you don't capitalize the first letter of the sentence, you don't put a, a period at the end, things like that, recruitment officers tend to notice that. Um, and that can make or break your application to a guild. The second way of applying is obviously nowadays uh, some guilds you just straight up uh, PM a an officer, recruitment officer in Discord or on Bnet and you just chat with them. Now most guilds will not cover any costs when it comes to transferring. So if you're not on the same uh, server and you have to transfer, most guilds will not cover this. But if they do, you know, that's a huge bonus. And also most guilds will have a trial period. Now in this trial period, it can be anywhere from, you know, a single week up to several weeks to several months, uh, depending on the guild. But treat this trial period as not only as them trialing you, but as you trialing the guild. How do you like the environment? How do you like the people? How do you like their whole approach to the game? If you happen to find like-minded people in the guild, that is typically a very good sign. You know, if they approach the, the game the same way as you do, if they like doing the same stuff within the game as you do, that is typically a very good sign. Now for the last part of this video, which will be once you've kind of dabbled with Mythic Rating, how do you go about improving and actually joining some higher-end guilds? So first of all, uh, just to give you a little bit of an idea, higher end mythic guilds about up to the top 20 in your region will raid anywhere from eight hours to 16 hours a week. If they raid any more than that and they're not at least top 20, then I would consider avoiding them. Um, but that is kind of the range that you, you're looking at as far as time investment goes per week for raid itself. And up to top 20, you will still only need one character. Um, obviously, most of those uh, players have optional alts, but they're not required at all for the raid itself and for progress. Um, as far as going about searching for these guilds and applying, it's a lot of the same process. Um, typically, you will want to have mythic ranks for these. It's not enough to just have heroic logs. But... If you're trying to push top 20, it's most likely that you've been raiding um, in kind of the introductory mythic scene for a while. And that is usually a big bonus, especially if you're doing well within that. And up to the top 20, again, recruitment officers will look primarily at parses. Uh, this is not yet the range where they will kind of dive deeper in the logs and start looking at like your defensive usage, your, you know, your healthstone usage, how often you die on fights. Uh, try to find progression logs of you. This is still the range where if you can do damage, you are basically um, in a good standing and have a good chance to make it into a guild that you're applying for. Beyond the top 20, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, well, maybe not tricky, but it's a little bit different. Your logs will be less about just straight up being able to do damage and like i said they will look a little more at how you actually play your character uh, they will take raid experience a little more into account whereas for introductory mythic rating or even like higher in mythic rating top 100 to you know top 20 top 50 uh, raid experience is not necessarily that significant um and then beyond the top 20, you will typically be required to have at least one character uh, that is a, an alt, so your main plus and an alt character. But most alt characters don't get played on progress at all. Your alt character is basically always just for splits where you can funnel gear to main characters. Um, and I can speak from experience on this um raiding in the higher end scene where it's not necessarily super high end uh so there's about us 7th to us 10th range we had one alt my alt which was a rogue so very meta alt 
only got used on one boss in two entire tiers, and that was on Zul, which was a notorious rogue stacking fight. So your alt will most likely not be used on progress in any capacity. Um, and again, this kind of depends on what your main is um, and what your alt is. If your main is a very meta class, such as, I don't know, you're the one demon hunter in the raid, or you're a rogue, um, or you're a warlock, you're not going to be switching off of that character. However, if your main is maybe a niche character, like a death knight, a red paladin, enhancement shaman, uh, for casters, I don't even know, um, elemental shaman, maybe? Um, then maybe you should consider rolling a more meta alt in case it will get used. But even at this range, um, alts are not necessarily for progression purposes, they're most, mostly for just gear funneling purposes. So you will not be spending anywhere near the amount of time on your alt than as you do on your main. Thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully these tips helped with getting into a mythic guild. And I really hope that a lot of you who watched this video who weren't mythic raiders before consider joining a mythic raiding guild because if you like PvE and you haven't experienced mythic raiding, you definitely should because you're missing out otherwise. Again, thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.